everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you another ultra chipping tag. This one I used stencil rubbing to make some collage paper and then I collaged it onto my tag and made it and made it some more stenciling and whatever, you'll see. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I have a sanding block which is something that is for your fingernails. Uh, Maybe it, probably your artificial nails, I would imagine. And I bought a package of these sanding blocks. They're small. They fit in my hand well, easy to use. I was using them the other day to sand back some of that uh, dried gesso that I had on a different tag. And I still had it on my desk. And so I decided to do some of this stencil rubbing. Now, this is magazine paper. and It's a magazine ad that was very dark and... Um, it has some white writing in places and then it has it had a picture of a couch in the middle which I cut apart and the magazine paper the the ink sits right on the top so it's very easy to just rub over the top of it with any type of sanding paper I just like these blocks because they're small and they fit in my hand um, and it it scratches off the ink and then you get a reverse image of the stencil. So I've got different stencil, girl stencil here. Uh, you know I love that company the best and I will I will look up which ones they were and put it in the description box below like I always do. I hope you guys are using those those links down there because it takes me a lot of time to do that so um, I will look up what stencils I use but I wanted just like I didn't want anything specific. I wanted real uh, mark making or or abstract or whatever grid looking type stuff to use for my collage paper. I didn't want it to be, you know, oh, here's a fish <laughs> because we're doing abstract. Uh, I did find that the smaller lined ones didn't work as well. It just looked, it didn't, it didn't come out very clear like that one. Um, so do use ones that have larger holes in the stencil because of course that makes it better rubbing than the small tiny ones. So I plan on using these pieces for collage obviously and I'm going to do that over a shipping tag that already has paint on it. Uh, I grabbed one that was actually, I sometimes use them, use them as demo or as like a test of something that I might do. Um, and this one just has, I don't know, I think I had, it might have been when I was talking about gesso techniques in one of my basics, mixed media basics videos, and I did different stuff on it. Uh, don't need it anymore, and so I'm going to just collage over the whole thing. So I'm taking a metal ruler and tearing up my papers, um, finding bits that I find interesting. I even used a little bit of the couch picture here. It's got different grays. And I want, I want things that are dark because the prompt that I'm using, I don't know if I said that before, the prompt is dark. And so I need things that are dark. <laughs> Seems fairly obvious, right? But um, I had them all laid out and they looked pretty good. So I went to glue them down and I'm using YooHoo Blue Glue Stick. It comes out blue and then it dries clear. This stuff is great. I'm really, really enjoying using it. You know, in the past I've used uh, mediums and with magazine paper, I tell you what, I have never found a medium, even my cloth, even my napkin medium that I love for thin papers, it still, it bubbles too much on the magazine papers. So using this glue stick, for magazine pages is definitely the way to go. And I have a baby wipe that I'm using to just kind of smooth everything down and clean up any excess uh, glue that goes out over the edges. So this prompt is from Abstract August from Art Joy of Sharing, our Facebook group art community. And you can still join. There's plenty of prompts left. <laughs> don't think that uh, that it's it's you don't have time. I mean, you do. These little things that I'm doing are quick, and uh, the editing the video takes me longer than making the project. Uh, 
So please join in. Come and uh, have some fun with us. Some pe- some more people have joined, and we've been getting lots of posts in the group. If you don't belong to group, that's okay too. You can just use the hashtag AJOS Abstract August anywhere you post on social media, and it it will be it will we'll be able to find it that way. So I'm trimming off the edges. I ended up having a few spots left. And I was thinking to myself, what should I do? You know, if you if you want to make something dark, if you want it to seem like the dark theme, then you need to have light, right? Because you can't see the dark if you don't have light. Otherwise, it would just be a black gesso tag and we'd be done. <laughs> There's some abstract art for you right there. That's more like modern art. A canvas painted black. That's it. We're done. So yeah, didn't didn't think that was a good idea. So I decided to paint those little areas white. And then I thought that they were just, there was too much contrast. Those whites were just too white. Too white. So I'm looking around on my desk and I found this little scrap that I had, of a piece of security envelope that I had used the other day on a different abstract prompt I can't remember which one but it was just laying on my desk and it thought I thought it looked good with it so I threw on a couple pieces of that because it's just uh, black lines on white and it really seemed to fit into my my idea here so I'm just popping in a couple of those but I still had one more hole left where I painted with the white gesso so I needed to find something for that one too because it was too, it was just too stark, too, I don't know. Maybe because the other ones are kind of gray, gradiated um, because of the sanding. The white gesso was like, ah, too white. So I found this little scrap of some tissue that has some text printed on it. I don't care what it says, it's not gonna matter. I'm just gonna cut a little piece of that out and put that over that white spot. And then my first layer will be done, almost. Well, my first layer's done. <laughs> I am using a baby wipe to wipe out any excess glue that I get on there and to make sure there's no bubbles. But no bubbles, I like that. I That's one thing that using magazine pages that has always ir- irritated me. So now I can use more ma- magazine pages. So now I'm looking at it and up where that diamond pattern is, there is some print that's showing and it says Ottoman because the picture had a couch in the middle of it and I just did not like it. So I wanted to cover it up. So I grabbed another piece, but then when I turned that piece over to put some glue on the back, I actually liked the back. (laughs) I thought the back looked cool. Uh, it's, It's a cabinet or a window or something. I don't know, but it's got those lines on it and I thought that it looked really cool. It also it added in another neutral color because it's kind of uh, off-white in brown type colors which I thought was beneficial. So I put a little piece there to cover up the white writing about the ottoman and the sizes of the ottoman and um, then I decided to take the extra little piece off instead of making it go all the way across and put it down there so that I had another spot on the tag that had that color. And I was very happy with that. So cleaned it up, made everything, sure everything was pressed down. And then I decided to do a little stenciling over the top just to integrate the spaces. It looks very, it looks very blocky now because you know, it's got all these little rectangles everywhere and I wanted it to be look more organic than that. So I got out some black gesso and a stencil. Um, this one's from Stencil Club and it's just got like these curved lines on it and I thought that might be kind of cool. So I stenciled that on over the center of the tag and then I took my baby wipe and kind of... Um, smeared it out on the edges so that it didn't look look like there was lines. And that seemed pretty good. Then I thought, well, maybe I should add in some gray because if you have black and white, 
you should probably have gray. And so I was trying to get any excess off the stencil. It didn't have anything. It was already dried. So I didn't really get any marks from that. Um, but I decided to add some gray paint. And so I grabbed out some gray paint and some more stencils. This is my little ring of four by fours from Stencil Club. Almost all of them are from Stencil Club. This one's not though, this labyrinth one is one I actually purchased because that fascinates me, that type of a shape and the idea of walking around it for meditation. If I had one close to me, I would do that. Um, so I put some gray and I thought, eh, I need a little bit more gray because now it looks light in that spot. So I took another one of the stencils and put a little bit over that black uh, swath in the middle and that that made it look a lot better right there. That was a big difference. And then I put just a little bit more in the corner and some more here and there, um, blending it around. And I was happy with that. That looks better. But I still didn't have, it wasn't drawing my eye anywhere onto it. It didn't have composition that led me to see something and so I decided to add one more layer and I really I liked this little um, person that I had done the stencil rubbing on one of the ATC stencils it's just a little person that appears to be dancing or jumping for joy or something and I thought I could put that on and it would draw the eye and so that's what I decided to do just a little silhouette So I put that down and then I felt I needed to do some mark making with my Jumbo Jet pencil. <laughs> kind of addicted to that pencil right now. <laughs> it's uh, Im impregnated with oil charcoal. And I have them in black and white and I actually have a couple other colors I haven't really used. But the bl I'm obsessed with the black one and I've been using the white one quite a bit. These are from Jerry's Artorama stores which are in North Carolina and I'll put a link down below I'm just yeah obsessed obsessed with the jumbo jet pencils right now <laughs> I get obsessed with things sometimes so I hope you're enjoying this series of abstracts all month of August and you will give me a thumbs up and leave me a kind comment below or a question if you have one subscribe if you haven't already uh, turn on your notification bell so that you know when uh, the next video will come out, which is probably tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow morning. So you don't want to miss it. And of course, you can uh, pin this on Pinterest if you want to. I made an abstract August board on Pinterest um, to pin any of the abstracts that myself or Peg are doing. So you can do that too if you want to help you find them later. So I backed this tag with some gray cardstock. Uh, the white didn't look right. I started with white and then I thought, nah, that's not right. But I glued it on there with tacky glue and I stuck it down too quickly and it wasn't straight. <laughs> so I had to take my paper trimmer and trim the edges so that they, they were straight. It was not going to make me happy. Um, It actually made the, the frame a little bit closer anyway, so that that was cool. I liked that. I don't want much of a frame, just a little bit, you know? Just, to, just makes me happy. And then, of course, I need to punch the hole and I need to add some fibers. So I'm using my, uh, what is that called? A crocodile punch. It's a punch and a setter for... Um, whatever those things are called, uh, eyelets, an eyelet setter. And then I looked for something to put on there. And <clears throat> I found this piece of grow grain ribbon in black that has some sticky stuff on the back. It's for, uh, it's, I was ironing it on to a project at one point. So it was very flat. And I thought maybe I'll glue that on and give my little person who's dancing to uh, have a floor. Because, you know, that's something that bothers me when things don't have floors. Also, this piece that I grabbed out is a piece of, um, 
uh, tactical cord or uh, paracord. It just keeps fraying the inside of it. Very annoying. So I had to put some glue on the end of it so it would stop fraying. So there's my little dance floor. And that gave some texture. Um, kind of cool. So the last little thing that I tied on to tie it all together is some gray uh, sewn trim of some sort. Don't know where that came from. But anyway, that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.